Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to look at are the ones that you will find on page number 298. On page 298, before I take care of problem number 14, let me first take care of problem number 15. Problem number 15. All of these problems that you see there, all of these problems, every single one of that, uh, the, these problems that you see there, occurred, appeared, in the first edition of the revised GRE, the book that I'm holding in my hand, this book came out last summer, in the summer of 2011. I have already solved almost all the problems in this book. Since I've already solved problem number, since I've already solved problem number 15, I'm simply going to give you the day number where you'll find it. Problem number 15 is something, is a solution to problem number 15 is something that you will find at day number 199. Just type in this tag, revised GRE math, day 199, and you will find it. On, oh, on day number 200, the very last day, because I spent 200 days there. On day, day number 200, I did a bonus problem, a problem that is not in the book, a problem very similar to the problem number 15, an extra problem, which I did on day number 200. But I did not do, day num uh, I did not do problem number 14, which I'm going to do right now. Okay, problem number 14. It has two parts to it, 14A first obviously. In 14A, we are dealing with a situation of two events. We are told that events A, events A and B are mutually exclusive. What does it mean for two events to be mutually exclusive? That's the part we have to understand first before we worry about solving this problem. Two events are said to be mutually exclusive if two events are said to be mutually exclusive if occurrence of one prevents the other from happening. Let me give you a couple of examples, a couple of very simple examples, listen carefully and you will understand it. Let's first talk about an example where two events are not mutually exclusive. If the two events are not mutually exclusive, then the occurrence of one does not prevent the other from happening. For example, let's say I have a, a, a container, a box, in which I have put down names of all the kids in the school, in, in, in my school. There are, there are, there are, I took the roster of all the boys and girls uh, from, from uh, this is the elementary school, uh, first grade, second grade, third grade, and fourth grade. I put down first grader, second grader, third grader, fourth grader, boys and girls in a container, uh, on a piece of paper. And then I put my hand in the air, I close my eyes and pick one at random, completely at random. Here, we could very easily ask, what are the odds that the person that I picked at random is a girl? Well, the odds that the person picked at random is a girl is very simple. It's just the number of girls divided by the total number of students, the boys and the girls. Very simple. Nothing, no complication there. The next question is, what are the odds that the person that I picked at random is a third grade student and a girl? Well, being a third grade student does not prevent that person to be a female. It could very well be a third grade female because we are assuming that we have boys and girls in all four grades. So just because it's third grade does not prevent her from being a female. These two events are not mutually exclusive. The occurrence of one does not preclude the other. Now let's talk about two events that are mutually exclusive. Let me, let me continue with this example. Now in addition to all the boys and girls, all the students in the, uh, in, in the box, I also put down 
the names of all the teachers in the box. And this being elementary school, which is why I emphasize this is elementary school, this being elementary school, the teachers are not students at the same institution. This is not a college where it's possible that a teacher might also happen to be the student at the same college. We are, we are, we are excluding those complications. Here, everybody in the school is either a student or a teacher. Now if I put my hand in the, in the box and put one name at, at random, pick one at, name at random, what are the odds that that person that I picked at random is a student and a teacher? Is zero. Because as we just said, everybody is either a student or a teacher. So if I tell you that the person that I picked at random happens to be a teacher, that precludes the possibility that the person is also a student. Occurrence of one event, occurrence of one event prevents the other from happening. You can either be a student or a teacher. So if I, if I picked one person at random and that person happens to be a student, then if somebody asks you what are the odds that that person that you picked at random is both a student and a teacher, the answer is a big fat zero. It is impossible. Whereas in the first example, there exists an answer. Somebody could very well ask you what are the odds that the person that you picked at random is a third grader female or a first grader boy. There, one criterion does not affect the other one. You could just as well be boy and be a first grader. Occurrence of one event does not preclude the other. The two events were not exclu mutually exclusive. In the, event, in the example that I just gave you, two events are exclusive. Let me give you one more example, a simpler example perhaps. Let's say I roll a dice. If I roll a dice, then the number that's going to show up on the dice is going to be either an even number or an odd number. So if I ask you, if I, it's just we're talking about one roll here, I, I ask you, if you roll a dice, and the question is, what are the odds that the number that appears on the roll is both even and odd? To which you will say, what the hell? The number cannot be both even and odd. Why? Because here, the two events are mutually exclusive. Just like in the previous example, a person picked at random cannot be both boys and girl. And the one before, the person picked at random cannot be both a student and a teacher because we said that everybody in the school is either a student or a teacher. So a person cannot be both student and a teacher, person cannot be both, person cannot be both boy and a girl. Similarly, here, in, so if somebody were to ask you what are the odds that if you pick one, somebody at random, what are the odds that that person picked at random is both boy and a girl, the answer is big fat zero. Because the occurrence of one event precludes the other. So those two events are mutually exclusive. Similarly here, what are the odds that you, the number that, number that shows up on the roll is both even and odd, the answer is zero. If that happens, then those two events are said to be mutually exclusive, which is what we are dealing here. We are told that these two events are mutually exclusive. The equation that we have to understand, and the equation that we have to deal with, equation that you must memorize for the exam. I'm going to put it on the blackboard. I'm going to erase all of this thing. We already have all of this thing. Uh, perhaps I should leave it for a while. The most fundamental equation, the most fundamental equation in the, in, in the study of probability is the one that I'm going to put on the blackboard. The GRE expects you to know this equation and the equation goes something like this. The odds of an event A or B or both equals the odds of A plus the odds of B minus the odds of A and B. This is the most fundamental equation in this case. I'm going to raise this thing. This is getting me too much. This equation is the most fundamental equation. You should know this by heart. But this is the equation that we're going to have to use here. In, the, in our case here, we are told that the probability of A, let's see what, what it is here. We are told that the probability of A or B is 0.6. Probability of A probability of A is 0.2. Notice this, notice this part, pay attention here. It does not say and. If had it been and, then we wouldn't have it this part. It does not say probability of 
it's just A or B or both. And that probability is same as probability of A, the odds of event A happening plus the odds of event B happening minus the odds of event A and B happening. Now if they are mutually exclusive as we just said, event A and B cannot both take place at the same time. You cannot roll, a, you cannot roll an even number and an odd number. If you pick one person at random, that person cannot be both student and a teacher in our example. If you pick one student at random, that student cannot be both a boy and a girl. So if they are exclu mutually exclusive, the odds of event A and B happening at the same time is a big fat zero. This part is going to be zero here. So our equation here is, we can continue with this equation. The odds, we are told, or right here, we are told the odds of A or B is 0.6. Odds of A or B, I'm going to erase, it, erase actually this part so we can continue here. The odds of this, we are told, is 0.6, which equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Now they told us that they are mutually exclusive, that's their way of saying that this thing, this thing is a big fat zero. This, is, this thing is a the odds that A and B happen at the same time is a big fat zero. And how do we know that? Because they told us that they are mutually exclusive. This part here, the odds, the odds that event A and B occur at the same time is a, a big fat zero. It cannot happen. So we only have to deal with this part. And they tell us the odds of A. Odds of A, they tell us, is 0.2. Therefore, we can figure out the odds of B. Therefore, the odds of B, the odds of event B happening is just 0.6 minus 0.2 or 0.4. That's it. That's all there is. And these are called mutually exclusive. In the next example, we'll deal with two examples. Uh, we'll deal with an example in, in, in part B. We'll deal with the situations where the two events are independent. Independent means exactly what it says. Two, two events are said to be independent where the odds of one event happening has absolutely nothing to do with the odds of other happening. Do you understand? And in such a case, the two events are said to be independent, which we'll do in the, in the next video because I think this video is getting to be too long already. I'm not going to do the part B. We'll do the part B in the next video. All right? Bye now.